Hi guys. Let's put some music on. So I'm just going to wait for some of you to come on. Um, if you're on, just say something in the chat room. So while we do that, because some of you will actually come on later, um, I'm going to ask you to do a few things. So let's see. Okay, so I gave you guys some homework. And today's, today's thing is about prosperity. So... Some of the questions I asked you guys to do was, number one, is to write down how you relate to prosperity. So I want you to all start answering that while we're waiting for everyone. So again, the question is, how do you relate to prosperity? So, while we're doing that, I'm going to start talking about prosperity and and how funny it is that I chose this time um, to do to do this video program. So I have people sending me stuff all the time, articles, videos, um, all kinds of information, and I'm very in tune with everything that's going on but I don't really read or watch anything because mm, because I feel like it skews my my connection to source so I it, it makes me go from a mental perspective rather than an intuitive perspective and so I chose September 9th because um, a few reasons First reason was because it felt good to me. That was like uh, the number, September 9th. I was like, okay, this period of time feels really nice um, to start this kind of program. And the other reason why I, I liked September 9th, uh, yes, there's, there's, a, there's all video. If you guys, if you're having problems, you, I would suggest to restart the, um, your Facebook. So yeah, maybe that will help. So the other reason why I did is because of um, timing. For me, it was just it just made sense. My daughter went back to school, and um, it just felt right. You know, I did I did. I'm starting to learn that I can't just go by feeling. I also have to go by what makes sense for me as well. And that's part of my growth as well. Um, with learning how to manage my time and boundaries because of course I'm you know spirituality is um, something that you always have with you but then making it something that you have to share with others that's a whole nother thing because now you're managing and creating some sort of um, business right especially if you're charging of course we're not charging here but but this is a, all something that's it's in training for myself as well. So I'm going to get very personal um, throughout this program. So that's how I usually work all the time. I'm very personal. I share my own experiences on 
how I've grown and how I've seen things, my my perspective, and then how it's how it, my perspective has progressed because of Source and the clarity that Source gives me. And and essentially, it's the the connection. Perfect. Essentially, it's the connection to our soul. And so this is why you all know how I'm so all about soul and control. And in this absolute truth, um, some of you are starting to feel that, um, that you operate more and more from soul level. Some people call it spirit and whatever you want to call it, but it's your essence, your true essence. It's your divine essence of what you were born with. So we all have to start moving towards that more so than moving, you know, operating from our mental state, our programming, and, you know, what society thinks of us and how we should be, um, essentially, in the world. So I did write a few things down that I want to touch upon, and that, 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 was, um, that was some of the things I've already mentioned. But what I feel at this time is that I learned that astrology, in astrology, that um, is a good time for abundance um, for all of us, actually. So it's so perfect that I chose this time to talk about it because as, as I talk to you about abundance and prosperity, um, you can all put that in action because right now, um, astrologically, the planet is being... Um, you're being served with that and so why not take the opportunity right now not later but right now to take those steps forward towards that prosperity uh, so let me just give you a little bit of background about myself okay what gives me the um, authority to even talk about prosperity my whole life um, I've I've lived very modestly growing up um, with my family and and, but I always felt in my heart that I, I always wanted to have prosperity and abundance because feel, the feeling of lack for me was not, did not resonate at all. I just knew that um, I never wanted a lot, but whatever I, I wanted um, was I wanted it to be in reach so that I could, uh, I could, I didn't have to struggle for it. Now, there's, there's two different ways of looking at things um, when you're working towards something. There's struggle and there's the challenge, right? So now the struggle is, is basically, you know, be, beating yourself up, um, being tired, getting sick over it. Um, you know, there's so much pushback and, um, and nothing's really moving forward. There's no flow. Okay, and then the challenge is, you know, finding, meeting that, that space, that time where you are um, getting some uh, resistance, but then you push, you push just a little bit and suddenly it's, it disappeared, this resistance. And, and that's the difference, you know, and then there's flow after that. And then there, you might see that again, come up again, but again, the challenge there is just for you to learn something but, and you push through a little bit and it's finding that space, that open space, and then, of course, there's flow again. So, um, so that's essentially the difference between the struggle and the challenge. So if you yourself see that you are struggling right now to gain prosperity, okay, it just means that you're not operating from your soul level. You are operating from your mind, and your mind tells you, and what is your mind? You're saying, okay, well, why, why should I operate from my soul level? Why should I trust my soul? Well, that's your essence. And why should you trust your mind? Your mind is just your programming. It's basically what you've learned through your parents or through your, your peers or through your schools or through uh, the people that you work with. Okay, so I'm reading some of your comments right now. Okay, so 
so yes so now I see that some of you are saying okay unfortunately poorly it feels like I should feel guilty for wanting it right okay so that's another thing we're going to talk about um, feeling guilt towards wanting prosperity is it um, is it pushing against resistance or accepting the resistance so we stop struggling so okay so those are, that's a good question Sudarta. Um so is it pushing against resistance or accepting the resistance so we um, stop struggling so if you accept the resistance is a good sign because then you say well this is I'm this is it this I, I understand that there is I have resistance but doesn't mean that you have to you have to stop there you see because that's giving up and then you know giving it away to God see now I love to say that we are the co-creators with the divine okay because we are all mini gods okay and so everything that we do here on this plane is an op is basically an operation for God to say you here you go I'm operating here and you operate there okay and so whatever that means okay whatever that means here and there so my the whole thing is that we need to connect spirit to matter okay spirit God matter is us and of course we hold that spirit into us so we are the co we are co-creating with the divine so meeting challenges and operating from a higher space with the understanding of okay there is I'm not going to um, I'm, I see my resistance here and I'm going to uh, release that and try to change that that's the whole thing that if we give up there where there's resistance then you're not there's nothing to change there's nothing to do and we give it away to God so we need to look at it from a higher perspective and say okay there is here there's something here that I need to look at I need to I need to um, discover what what is in me that is resisting all right, so let's go back to um, the challenges and the um, the struggles, okay? Because I know so many of us have this right now. We're struggling with our work. We don't. We're not happy there. Um, we're not making enough money. Um, we are. You know, we're not. We're struggling with our um, coworkers. We're struggling with our boss. So. So. When everything is a struggle, everything, okay, is basically the field. I like to call it the field because this everything is God, the God field telling you something. Okay. God is telling you, hey, Val, look at this. It's so difficult for you to merge with this. It's so difficult for you to understand what you need to do here. Why? So, okay, I like these comments. I'm reading through the comments. So, so why is there resistance towards there? And so then you have to discover that. Why is there resistance? Okay. And, and so, you can say there's many reasons. Well, I don't resonate with the people at work, the way they think. We're, co we're constantly clashing heads. We, I, I, don't, um, I don't understand um, why, wh I, don't, I don't feel that I have the worthiness, like uh, Alyssa's saying, to make more money and to get a, um, a raise. And um, we can also say, well, I don't understand, I don't really like the work that I do. How many of you actually moved into something that you don't even like? You just went to school, you went to a college, and then you graduated and you end up with a job just because, just to make money. How many of you? 
Now, I, I can't say that because I actually loved my job. Everything I, I did, I loved. So I was very lucky in that sense. And I made a lot of money. And that's why I made a lot of money because I actually loved my job. Right? But we, this is a new paradigm that we're, we're in. We don't need to do that anymore. And I'm telling you, the divine is supporting that. The divine is supporting that. So that fear of not knowing where to go and what to do next, because this job is giving you so much money, but not, but very little satisfaction. That's gonna go. That all all that fear will go as soon as you step into something that makes you feel good and is aligned with you. You know, there's a whole. The, everyone's talking about this. The new, the new hustle is being aligned. We don't need to hustle anymore. That's the whole point. We just do what's aligned with ourselves. Let me read some of your comments. Okay, good. Never do that again. Good. I wanted to, to be a doctor. I ended up in IT. I love my job too. Went, went with the flow. Yes, I remember you telling me that, Sid. That's, that's amazing. That's, that's great. Making a life rather than a living is a hard concept, but it starts there. Following the passion versus perceived needs. I'm this and scary but I'm getting out of the way yes okay good good you guys can even chat with each other there while I keep talking okay because something might just click you know um, so okay but what else do I want to talk about okay so that's that's some of the things okay so I want you to start thinking about what how you see prosperity okay now for 15 years you know, I'm not, I'm not that old. So, <laughs> so for 15 years, I made a good living. Now, I had so much freedom. For me, prosperity at that time in those 15 years from, I started working since I was, I don't know, 16. Okay. I went to school. I never graduated from college, but I had all these skills. Okay. I went to school for computer programming and, um, and so by the time I was 19, I started working for several um, dot coms and making a lot of money for my age. And I was I had a lot of freedom. I had stock. I had I had all kinds of things, health health insurance and and um, all these benefits. And it was so much fun working for these dot coms. It was, that was like that was the the era of like. It was the early '90s. It was the era of of the like the most fun time of being for, working for any kind of company in dot com. It was we had so much fun every day, and working hard though. So my work ethic was very. Um, it was like that. It was basically based on working really hard. I mean, really hard, like working from all day, you know, until I finished that program to then. The next day, not working at all and just playing and ping pong and going for walks in the streets in Soho and um, and having long lunches. And then the next day, maybe back to work again, just like that. But that trained me for having this freedom, working really hard and having this freedom. So that was my conditioning. Um, but at the same time, I was very happy doing that. There was never a complaint, and I, there was no there was no resistance. And the only challenges that came up was basically for my development. Um, and I love that though because the challenges weren't struggles; they were they were just challenges. And um, yes, and I, I was working. I was essentially working for myself. I uh, I was a consultant. I was working for myself, so I made a lot of money at a very young age, and I had a lot of fun too. And there were times I would take off for six months and not work at all and just travel the world. So I, my, my soul essence was in control, okay? Because everybody thought when I left high school that I was going to go into fashion. And I was like, 
no way. What? I don't even care about fashion. Why should I go into fashion? But they're like, oh, but you would be so perfect in that field. No, I actually, and I was very rebellious also. I always wanted to do what everyone thought I shouldn't have done. So I went into IT. I was, I was the oddest girl in IT because back then only like these very geeky looking people used to go into IT. And like, oh, it was all men. I only had one other girl in my class, I remember. And, um, and you know, she, she was like very introverted. And even though I, I'm introverted as well, I could be at times. But, um, but this, that's besides the point. The whole point is that I, tr I trusted what my soul was telling me. And I went into that and had a spark when I heard computer science and you know programming I had this huge spark I felt it. it was like it took over my being I was like wow this is so interesting it's so new and it's so it's so um, you know it's so out of the box and I, I, I just want to explore this because I'm, I'm curious you know and that curiosity fed this this um, this passion and the passion turned into um, so much so much joy and and abundance and um and freedom and freedom so so i was um so i i was just i was happy i was happy with what i did and i i learned so much um i've grown so much and i still love doing that stuff um and that's why, you know, I actually developed my own website and I do, and I do other people's websites too. And I, and I mean, not for work anymore, but I still love it. And I'll never stop learning about technology. It's a passion. Um, so, so that's how it started. So now I have a Kundalini awakening. Okay. So, okay, in between that time, you know, I, I developed my own company. I also was interested in acting, so I, I, I you know, pursued acting. I, I, you know, I took off of work making, I don't know, I was making so much money. I was making like $200,000 a year, and I was in my, I was like 20 years old. And, um, and so um, by 21, I, I decided to go back to school for acting, and you know, I, I pursued that, and then I started doing really well with that. Um, started getting all these jobs, acting, and and um, in all these very big TV shows that that were shot in New York, and um, and I I got I was I was on MTV, and then I and then I started my own company after that, and that became really big, and then I and then they created my own show from that. Everything I did was in the flow. Everything I did. It didn't matter what people thought I should do. It didn't matter how um, the the you know the fear around it. I, I just I just pushed through because I said to myself, no, I have this inside of me. And there's a reason why I have this inside of me. I have to seek and see why why it's there. I had to, I had to push through that, that you know, that social fear because basically society brings in that fear. It really has nothing to do with us, right? It's it's everything around you that builds up that fear. Oh, what I won't make enough money. What about if I don't make it? What about if if I get fired? What about if um, I'm not good enough? It's that's that's the social fear. Because who taught you that? Nobody taught you that. Unless somebody actually did say that to you. And then, even then, it could be a, a huge challenge. It's a huge, um, it's a catalyst in your life to push through that as well. So anyway, the whole point is that when you're working with your soul and you feel these sparks of light, when you hear something and you you could just feel it in your in your body this is what i need to do i've been thinking about this for so long it's in my mind it's in my field for a reason i see the signs everywhere i'm going to do it i'm going to pursue it if i lose a little money that's okay i won't regret it because at least it's out of my system 
So moving forward, um, I had I had my own company. I was doing really well, and then I had a Kundalini awakening. Talk about catalyst. Okay, the day I had the Kundalini awakening, I was never the same again. Okay, I. My company, to me, the, my very successful company, which is actually ValSecrets.com, but it's just completely different. Um, it didn't matter anymore. I didn't resonate with it anymore. My soul was saying something else. And um, actually, my soul was always saying the same thing. It's just my mind was saying something else. It was, it was the translation from the soul to the mind that was very different. Okay, so my mind has changed. My soul is always saying the same thing. I want you need to express yourself. You need to be artistic. You need to help people. You need to um, uh, you need to travel the world. You need to disco discover. You need to find the truth. You need to explore. Guess what? All those things are still in me, and all those things I'm still doing. It's just projected differently because my mind has changed. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to train your mind. Train your mind to think more clearly so that this, your soul's your soul's vision for your for your life can be can be put out there in a whole different way where it serves you. It serves you in a deepest way. And so that there you will find the happiness and the bliss and the contentment. So, so Sid, your your the signs keep telling you to change your job. Perfect. You need to follow those those signs. You need to look into that and say, okay, what is there for me? Okay. So now let, let's go let's go to the next question. Okay. What's the next question? What does prosperity mean to you? Okay. Okay. So you heard what prosperity meant to me, right? Freedom, bliss, joy, contentment, passion. That's what prosperity meant to me, okay? It wasn't about the dollar signs. It was basically that I was happy doing what I was doing. And I had enough money to do what I needed to do. That, that to me meant prosperity. What does prosperity mean to you? So yes. Okay, so let, let's write those down as we, as you, because um, I know there's a delay. So write the, type those up on the chat and I, I'll, I'll, you know, check in with you guys in there and I'll keep talking so so now I'm doing this and um, you know and I I became a mom right away after my community um, I was pregnant and I got I was really sick and I had to I had to just finish everything close my company I stopped working with IT I, I just finished everything it was it was over that phase was over and God put it that way he just designed it that way so there were my resistance was very little because I at that point my mind was saying no this is how it's gonna be otherwise I'm gonna end up in the hospital sick and I did already a few times so to me that was a strong sign that I had to stop right there and so once I did that I just was serving my daughter I became a full-time mom and I was just serving my daughter and at the same time growing spiritually. Um, my mind was clearing, my programs were breaking out, um, my, my understanding was changing. I was growing. So it was perfect because as, as I was taking that time off and being a mom, I could, I could grow also. My heart was expanding. I, you know, I was going through a lot of things um, with my relationship and everything. I was learning so much, and in, in which here today I can talk about it and and not be uh, sad of, uh, from it. And and then there was a time that I heard God's voice, and He told me, "You are ready to heal now." And I, and of course, I thought that was my ego because I was like, I never want to do that. 
that's not what I want to do. I, I love sharing my experiences, my, my spiritual experiences, but I'm not. I'm. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> there was my resistance, and so two seconds after that, it was. It was during an Abdi session. Abdi came up to me and said, "You're, you're go ahead, go around and heal," and. And uh, so that was my confirmation, and and then I did a video. I was just talking about it on with people. You know, I, was, I did a YouTube video, and and there was comments saying, "Wow, you know, you talked about it, and I could feel the energy coming up." So I was like, "Yeah, you know, I feel it too." And so at that point, I just knew that this energy it had it had nothing to do with me. I had to get myself out of the way, and I had to just allow for the energy to work. And so then all of a sudden, like, you know, I kept hearing these messages. Okay, you need to do ascension on this date. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But then I was like, fine, I'll do it. And my resistance, once my resistance was gone, all of a sudden things were flowing. Now, at my first session, I had like, I don't know, six people show up. Or maybe five. I don't know. It was some, something very little. And I wasn't even charging. <laughs> and nobody, hardly anybody showed up. But I still did it. And the next session, same thing. Maybe seven people showed up. And I didn't charge either. And, but I still did it. Because I knew I had to. You know, I had that spark. In my soul. I had it. And I knew I had to do it. It wasn't up to me anymore. Here. It's not up to me here. This is how we relate to me sometimes, right? It wasn't up to that anymore. It was up to the soul. The soul essence. The soul push. That was pushing me towards this. To do something like this. Now for you, it doesn't have to be like you have to do a session or whatever. It could be something else. It could be that, it could be that you need to paint a new painting. It could be that... You need to start writing. It could be that, mm, I don't know, you need to do yoga. It's anything. I don't know. I know all of you that are on here are on a spiritual path, so it's going to be something that's it's very um, in tune with that. You know, maybe it's, it's that you want to do um, music. You know, you've been pushing, you've been pushing back on, you play so well and you do so, such, you sing and you dance or I don't know, whatever it is, but you never put it out there. The first step is putting yourself out there. And all of a sudden, you're not making any money, but it feels so good. It feels so good to do what your soul essence wants to do. You know, I always wanted to help people. Always. It was always, that was always my thing. I want to help people. And for me, it was mostly for women at the time, pre, pre-awakening. And mainly because I was struggling with that. I had my own women issues. So I wanted to help women. Now I want to help everyone, not just women. Of course, I also wanted to help children as well. That was also a thing. It was women and children. For some reason, I left out men. But now it's, I just want to help everyone. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I want to help animals. I want to help, I want to help the planet. I want to help everything and everyone. That's, that's my soul essence. I want to help. And it's funny though. My pattern is I don't want, I don't accept help. But I'm learning now. I'm learning to accept help. Some of you, I've lost some of your comments. Oh, you're there. Okay. Um, so, once we learn to accept our soul essence and stop pushing back and stop rejecting it and stop, and we allow for it to, to be, you know, this is what Blossom Online is all about. My program, the 21 day program, is, is to, for you to blossom, is for your soul to come out and blossom. First, you need to trust 
right? You need to trust yourself and all the information that you know and, and, and build that foundation. And then all of a sudden you start growing. So that's what so that's what we're doing here. We're I'm planting seeds, okay? I'm planting seeds in your mind, training your mind to to think outside of that box that you put yourself into. I can only do this because this was this is what makes me enough money so I can do this. That's good. But what about all the other things that you want to do? There's nothing wrong with doing many things. You, you're not going to spread yourself thin. Because when you have a passion, it doesn't matter. The passion actually feeds you. Feeds you, gives you that energy that you need to do all this other stuff. You know, I do a lot of things. I'm I don't just do this. I do a lot of things. Now, it doesn't mean that all these other things give me money, but it gives me that satisfaction. You know, for me, being a mom is a job. It, I'm, I'm not getting paid doing that. But it gives me the greatest satisfaction of my life. And you, the parents on this, you know that very well. So think about it that way as well. Putting that step forward towards that passion just makes you grow even more. You know, we're always, so many of us are trained to think that we have one job and we can only get income from one, from one company, from that one job. No, it doesn't have to be that way. You can have multiple Multiple incomes coming from different kinds of projects. It could be all these small little projects, or it could be these big projects, whatever you can handle. It's all what you feel inside of you is, all that you feel inside of you is, is basically what you can manifest outside. So you have to trust the inside. If the inside tells you, I can't, I got this. I know, I want to do, I want, I want to do work with um, helping people and working with people at night and doing and going to the hospital and serving people that way. I also want to work with, um, uh, you know, in finance and make, make some money there as well. And then I also want to be an artist and paint some paintings and maybe one day I'll sell them. That's being prosperous. That's being abundant. Okay? When we, when we remove the box, when we become limitless, that's true prosperity and abundance. Is this feeling of being free to do whatever we want, whenever we want, and however we want. Now, of course, there's this whole monetary system, right, that we're, we're slaved, being enslaved to, right? But we don't have to be slaves to it anymore. See, the only thing that keeps us enslaved to money is the amount of things that we think we need, right? And which leads us to our next question. All right, the next question is, um, what do you need from prosperity? Okay. So I want you guys to answer that. What do you need from prosperity? What do you need from prosperity? What do I need from prosperity? I need to... Feed myself and my daughter. I need to buy some clothes for myself and my daughter. I need to pay for the internet so that I can do my work. I need to buy a car and pay for its insurance. 
I need to buy some things sometimes, like this beautiful Andara that Erica Rock has. <laughs> and, and so that I can enhance my spirituality. I need to buy beautiful um, murals like this, tapestries, so that I can see beauty around me. I need to be able to give gifts to others at times when I feel it in my heart. I need to be able to buy good food, healthy food. I need to be able to give people a chance to do free things with me. That's what prosperity means to me. What does prosperity mean to you? You see, we don't need that much. We just don't. But we've been trained to learn that we need more than what we need. Now I used to, I used to wear the high, like such high fashion clothes. I mean, my outfit used to be worth like at least a thousand dollars an outfit when I would go out. Um, you know, I used to go to the fanciest places to go out to eat or whatever. Um, and I used to go to the nicest, um, you know, vacations and things like this. It's nice to have those things, right? But how does this serve you? How does this serve for your highest good? Some things are, are there for us just to um, just to feed our ego. You know, there's so many times that I, I look around and say, I'd like to have this, and I'd like to have that. And I could just do it, because it doesn't cost that much, actually. My needs are, are very basic now, but I don't. I challenge myself. I challenge myself because I want to challenge myself. I want to grow. I don't want to keep feeding this need. Now you say, what's wrong with having a need? Well, there's nothing wrong with having a need. Sometimes we need to eat. Sometimes we need to drink. Sometimes we need to go to the bathroom. Yeah, of course. You have to you have to feed those needs. You have to take care of those needs. But those are the basic needs. And then everything else. You know, I need to get um, the latest technology. I need to I don't know. I need to I need to buy a very expensive purse. I need to get more spiritual clothing. I need, I need, I need. The need is basically to fill a void. Once you, you diminish that need and just being grateful for everything that you already have, suddenly you're not putting out so much money. You know, some of us need to buy something every single day. How many of you do that? That you need to buy something every single day, otherwise it feels like you didn't do anything. How many of you do that? Let's see. Be a minimalist. Yes, yeah, Sid told me once, 
being a minimalist is boring. It could be boring. Or it could be freeing. It's all perspective. You don't have to be an extremist. You don't have to be a minimalist. But you can minimize what you need. I never was a big, you know, um, I wasn't a very big like accumulator of things. I was all, I was always about quality, not quantity. So I would spend big money on on something that I wanted, like for example, like paintings or um, or handbag or uh, anything, anything that I just said, okay, yeah, I want this. And that was it. I would buy it. There was no, I wouldn't even think about money. So I would have things, a lot of things that cost a lot of money, but, but it wasn't like, it wasn't always like so much. I wasn't like a, a, a constant consumer. I didn't have to buy something every day, put it that way. You know, recently I bought, I bought an art a relic, a spiritual relic which is an art piece, and I spent a lot of money on it. Did I need to do that? No. No. But in my heart, it, it just made my heart pulse so much, and I thought, I want to give this to my daughter one day, and because this means so much to me, this piece. It just, it pulled me. Again, did I need it? No. Did I need it? But it was also a way, because I trust my heart, it was also a way of me saying, I trust that the divine will give me what I need also. And that's also being in a state of abundance. When you, when you know that your heart says, I need to get this, if I don't get this, I'm going to regret it. I need to get this. And then you say, okay, well, I trust that the divine will help me here. Maybe I, I don't need that much money this month or whatever, this year. But I know that I will get it somehow. So I'm gonna look at some of your comments. Let's see. Yes, okay, there's a lot. A lot of you are saying the same things. Travel, clothes. Okay. So, some of you know that, um, that, you know, what I do here, I don't make a lot of money. I've told this to some people, and and that's okay, I, because I know whatever I'm doing, I need to do it, because it's coming from my soul essence. I make I make some money, but I don't make a lot. I don't overcharge for things. I'm very modest, you know, with things because I just want to help as many people as I can, you know, and I. And I also don't want things to go to my ego either. You know, I want it to be a service to the divine. Everything I do is a service to the divine. Even raising my daughter is a service to the divine. And, and so... Melody, I like this comment. You, you kind of threw me off track with this comment. All I want is love, where I'm preventing the prosperity of love from entering. We all want love. You know, love it gives us an opportunity to share that prosperity and to grow together. That's really all we want, don't we? Because what's the point of being prosperous if you can't share it? What is the point? 
So this is, see, my my whole thing, if you notice, all I said, talked about is how I want to have money to buy things for myself and for my daughter. It's all about me and my daughter. So what's the point of being prosperous if you can't share it? Right? And that's coming up next, right, in relationships. You know, I had a dog. My, my first love was my dog. She's still my love, but she's my first love. And, and I, I spoiled her rotten because I had this money. I had a lot of money, and I just, I would buy her the best things. I'd buy her cashmere sweaters. I mean, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> but... That's how, mu that's how much I wanted to share with her. I wanted to share that prosperity with her. That's what prosperity is for, is to share. So basically, we all want to be prosperous so that we can share. I know we all want that, especially in this chat room. You know, greed is not something that we, you know, that we vibe to. All of us here, especially in this chat room, greed is not, is not, it's not in our field. It's not part of us. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be on the spiritual path. It's not part of us. We all are giving beings. So why should the greedy people have all the money? Why can't we have money too? The ones that want to share it. You can. You can have it. I'm just touching upon some of the things now, you know, that that this is like, you know, prosperity intro 101. Okay? We're gonna go deeper. But this is just this is just a way for you to see like where the patterns are in your mind. Okay, how you think about prosperity, what, why you want prosperity. I mean, really think about that. I want, you to, I want you to write down like a long list of all the things that you want when you have prosperity. Okay, you start writing that, doing that right now. Write that long list for, and you'll see the list won't even be that long. You'll see. It, you know, I, I had to, I wrote down that list. It was very difficult for me to fulfill. Because I was like, it had like maybe 10 things, and they're very basic. Traveling is expensive. A lot of us want to travel, right? It's expensive. We don't have to be rich to travel anymore, by the way. So, that's a whole other thing, you know, that's, that's prosperity you know, video number two. But let's just go into the basics of how we think about prosperity, what we want from prosperity. A piece of hair in my face is driving me crazy. <laughs> um, and what will your life look like if you were prosperous? Think about that one. How would your life change if you were prosperous? Where would you live? What would you do? How would your time schedule look like? Think about these things. You have to get so specific because you are manifesting it. You want to manifest it. So you have to be so specific with why you want the prosperity and how you want prosperity to look like when it's in your life. That's how specific you need to get. Because some of us are just thinking, prosperity, it's out there somewhere. I don't know that word, prosperity. I just want it. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it's going to be like or what I, what, what I want to do with it. But I just want it. Right? We need to get specific. Well, here's prosperity. Here you go. Now what are you going to do? What does it look like in your life? Okay? So start, start writing that down. Let's see if you have any answers. Okay. 
No, you don't leave yourself out in the cold. No, absolutely not, Melody. You have to, um, you have to take care of yourself first. You know, there's a saying in the airplane, you have to put your on, on your air mask first before you put it on anybody else. And that's absolute truth. That's the absolute truth. But we all want to share that too. You know, when you die, no one's going to say, Melody was such an amazing person because she had so much money. No way. No one's going to say that. She was the most prosperous woman that I knew. And who cares about that? What do we talk about when people die? Melody was a light in the world. She shared her heart and her soul wherever she went. The times that I had with her were so much fun and joyful. Her inner child always was blossoming through her wherever she went. That's what people talk about. Nobody cares about the money in the bank. They only, they only care if they're going to get, get some. Yeah. So I like Sid's comment. Um, I need to learn how to pack a small bag. Yes. Absolutely. I had a carry-on bag with me when I went to Cuba. And I always travel like that. Always. Always. And I still have clothes left to wear. I have a story. When I went to Africa, I was um, I was about 23 years old. Okay, so my new prime time of spoiled bratness. <laughs> okay, so I went with my boyfriend, and we both were so very spoiled in the sense of like you know what we ate, and you know we had we had specific needs, and and um, and you know we didn't like a lot of things, and and. Um, you know, we did things a certain way, and so I went to Africa, and I went on a safari, and literally, there are, you know, you sleep in a tent. Now, okay, it was a, it was a luxurious tent, because I had a bed inside. That's how you can, that's how they consider a luxury tent in, um, in Africa, but, um, but very simple. You know, the showers were basically a bucket of water. And sometimes in that bucket of water, there was a little surprise in it. And I'm not talking about just bugs. <laughs> Poop as well. So sometimes you were cleaner in, before you took the shower. So, so that was like just, you know, that, that experience of showering and drinking always from a bottle of water and, um, uh, you know, brushing your teeth like that. Like there was very limited water. We could, we could only use one bottle of water a day, okay, for doing anything, washing, brushing your teeth. You know, sometimes I would just pour some water on my head and go like this. <laughs> um, and eating things that I would never eat and, you know, being being very conscious of how I'm, where I'm throwing things out and what... And what I'm doing out in the, you know, in the jungle, um, just it changed me so much, and I noticed how little I really need, and it really put me in a survival mode. Um, I was there for a month, so that whole way of me thinking, you know, spoiled New York City girl. It was like, it was night and day when I came back. I was really changed. I have to say that was probably like my first spiritual awakening to my mind. I had a whole different perspective on what I needed and how I was acting, you know, in New York City and, and anywhere, anywhere. It was just spoiled, spoiled. You know, I would, no, no sense of, you know, recycling or running water or, you know, doing all these things that I, I don't 
do like now and I would fill the tub with water and just be totally unconscious of how much water I'm using and um, you know wasting food and oh gosh so unconscious and and but I've changed so much since then so much and I realized that I have more than enough I had enough I had enough I was enough everything was perfect I didn't need more than I had I had that mentality that I need more um, I need more I had the mentality that I had to get what I wanted otherwise I wouldn't be satisfied no Go with the flow. Go with the flow. So we are coming up on the end of this um, session. I just want you all to close your eyes. Sending you all a wave of love. And I want you to send yourself all a wave of love. Self-love. You are worthy of prosperity. But you must first decide what you're going to do with prosperity. And when you make that decision, Prosperity will come. So stay tuned um, for the next video. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to be about, but <laughs> but it's it's all in tune with you, with all of you. And um, so watch your emails. I know a lot of you that's going into your junk mail, so look into your junk mail, and also look on, on this wall, in this group, there will also be some information there as well, okay, have a beautiful day, be blessed